Hi and welcome to Blast from the Past, a nostalgic look back at the last four decades. A day of toy reviews, vlogs and a whole lot more from a range of different YouTubers. And this is a showcase of the G1 Insecticons. The G1 Insecticons. As a child and as an adult, they are some of my absolute favourite characters. And five years ago, I picked up the Platinum Edition. And it's incredible. It is completely sealed. It has never been opened. It has been on display in my collection for like a year when I like first got it and put in storage, brought out, put back on display, put back in storage and it's been a huge mistake. I have denied myself years of extra pleasure and more enjoyment from my toy collection by leaving it sealed in the box. Yes, it displays lovely as a box piece because it's got the open window, but I just, I am full of regret for not doing something more with it and especially so because I never had them as a kid. I never saw them in the shops and I never had any friends that owned them. They weren't exactly scarce from what I understand you know you could get them it's I just I never saw them in the toy shops and the department stores that I went to. My only experience of shrapnel was seeing a completely broken junker at a toy fair once and I stayed away from it. It's, it's not my thing to have broken toys or junkers in the collection, not as an adult. I like my toys to be not exactly perfect, but I want them to be in a, in a good condition. The one that I saw was losing all of its chrome. And that's one of the incredible features of the G1 Insecticons. So let's rectify that by opening this box right now. So come join me on the floor for some rug time. It's been a long time since I said that. Being sat on the floor on the rug just like it was when I was a kid, feels so nostalgic. Albeit with toys that I didn't have, I still have so much nostalgia and I'm so excited to finally get some first impressions and play around and see them and hold them for the very first time. This is gonna be so much fun. But before I do open them, Let's have a quick look at the box. So, released in 2015 as the Platinum Edition through the Generations line, we have the G1 Insecticons and they've taken on a much more grittier art style, a digital art style. Seeing the destruction of the cityscape, you know, they were on the cartoon they were just there for pure destruction ravaging Energon to feed and the artwork is actually raised in places embossed this part absolutely pops at the time in, in you know the mid 2010s there was a few releases in the Platinum Edition, you know, the Coneheads, I think they were called the Seeker Squadron and Predaking, King, and they all have this incredible artwork. Such a change from when they were last released, I think back in 
oh, the, the mid 2000s and the the white boxes yeah it's just, it's a great box it's it's big and you just you get all that great imagery and the back of the box is just as impressive as well as the front because of the size of the box you just get incredible imagery of the three insecticons insecticon bombshell never heard of him it's bombshell kickback and scrapnel again never heard of him so we're going to be calling them bombshell and shrapnel I fully understand that there was copyrights and licensing issues that they had to slightly change the names, but they will always be those two names for me. So you get to see each of the robots and their respective insects, the rhinoceros beetle, the grasshopper and the stag beetle. Coming from Diaclone, you get to see the cockpit where the tiny little micro figure would go but you do get the extra addition of three energon cubes such a great little accessory to have and something that really ties in the toys to the cartoon it's it's quite a significant thing for me and why i wanted to pick up the set i always say in my videos that it's the accessories that finally complete the toy and i can't wait to get a feel of what what they're like. I guess they're going to be rubbery and I I think it's actually my understanding of the toys that with the micro passenger compartment for the Diaclone figure the cube has been designed to fit inside that's just added play value and I can already tell how chromey they're going to be just from looking at the back of the box and there you have the seeker squadron the three cone heads it's a great box what it does miss though is the tech specs but they were long gone by that time and there in some ways i just want those to be on vintage packaging when it comes to g1 transformers the box has a flip top so you actually get a window and you can see the three Insecticons in their plastic prison and you get a little bit of a bio of who the Insecticons are. I can already see how shiny those silver bits are and I can see rub signs, I can see the Energon cubes. I can also see that they are tied in. So when it comes to opening it, they're going to be a little bit trapped for the moment. But with the magic of television, that'll be easily crossed. I just, I'm, I'm getting a little bit speechless and emotional. I can, I just want them to be in my hands. They, they look bigger than... I expected and are just the colours the translucent orange plastics really vibrant and the yellow accents of you know their antennae and their legs let's just let's just get it open here goes Do we have inside? So we have got stickers and instruction sheets. It's always an absolute joy to put stickers on a figure, unless you're doing Generations Metroplex, which takes like a whole day. Part of the fun 
of being a kid in the 80s was putting your stickers on badly on your G1 Transformers. Sometimes my brother helped. And then, you know, after one or two years of having G1 toys, you're, you're pretty much a pro. So yeah, we'll stick those on as we go through. And as I said, it looks like we've got ties on there. Freed from the plastic prison, transformed and all stickered up. Spending that time putting the stickers on and transforming them was pure, unadulterated, nostalgic fun. Putting them into robot mode has given them some serious height. And as I said previously, it's so shiny, it's untrue. And the stickers just really pop and they've just added just that extra dimension to them. For a first look, I am absolutely blown away and know that I've missed out. I've missed out on years and years of play and fun. But we're here now and it's so enjoyable. We'll take a look at Bombshell first. Bombshell, the rhinoceros beetle. The purple, heavy die cast, translucent, orange plastic where the driver would sit. If you're thinking about it as a diaclone toy, but obviously now that it's imported into the Transformers line and been updated somewhat, the Energon Cube can fit in there. Rolling wheels, being that these were originally mechs. It's a really cool insect. Really well put together. And as I said, the stickers just really bring the figure to life. And oh, so shiny. Absolutely glistens in the light. Bombshell. Let's have a look at his robot mode. What a stunning robot mode. So close to the animated model, it's untrue. His head is perfect. Obviously being a G1 toy, there is zero articulation. The arms can move up and down. You know what you're getting with G1 and you know I'm not so fussed about articulation when I know it's a, a vintage toy. More chromey goodness. The only thing that lets it down is how gappy those parts are but I can totally oversee that. You get a little bit of movement with his horn. And then obviously, as I mentioned, you can pop open the chest and pop in the energy kit, <coughs> the Energon Cube. I think the robot modes for all of the Insecticons are just so good. I like them more than the insect modes. Yeah, first impressions are, they're blowing me away. Moving on to shrapnel. Ah, poor shrapnel. Doesn't really have the best time of it, does he, in the movie? You know, gets blasted by his comrade Blitzwing, then gets shoved into a moat, then run over by Optimus Prime, to then be tossed out and his lifeless body drift through space. But then ultimately gets changed. Although, it is a bit of a pet peeve of mine that he appears on Junkion after being dead. But, you know, 
Transformers is full of animation errors, but Shrapnel, the Stag Beetle, and again, all the chrome, the shiny, shiny chrome. Robotic insects, you can see boosters, translucent pops again, the stickers. I really like the stickers on Shrapnel, just really, really cool. Bit of a, a fist showing, but fun. The Insecticons are so much fun. I really do enjoy finally having them, finally having them open. It's They've not disappointed one bit at all. Incredible. Just like with Bombshell, let's have a look at his robot mode. When it comes to robot modes of the three Insecticons, I've got to give it to Shrapnel. I think he is the best looking robot of the bunch. When his mandibles, I don't I can't call it antennae, his claws, once they are splayed, it gives him just some absolute definition and heft up at the top. Probably not going to mention articulation because it's exactly the same for all three. But yeah, more chrome, all the chrome, chromed weapon that beautifully fits onto his arm. Really, really good. There's just, there's zero kibble. On these at all. To be honest, most of the Diaclone imports just they don't have kibble. It's a bit later on in the G1 line that you start to get a little bit kibble crazy. And just like his counterparts. Room for energy on. Great, absolutely great. By far my favorite robot mode so far. Shrapnel. And finally, the leader, Kickback. In the same vein as saying Shrapnel has the best, my favorite robot mode, I'm giving the alt mode, the insect mode to Kickback. That's just a really cool robotic Grasshopper, the back hind legs, the, the ridges, you know, the shape of it, it's just, it's so close to a, a grasshopper, just in, you know, mechanical mecha robot form. Did I mention the shiny chrome? Yeah, so shiny. You do get some extra bit of articulation with his antennae, and you can do a bit more with his legs. Look at that translucent. That really pops. It's so, so clear. So dazzling. And the stickers. The stickers work really well. The stickers work really well across all of them. As I said, and I'm probably going to be repeating myself, I'm blown away by this first look. Absolutely. So, so good. I now have that issue of, you know, what modes do I have them in? Do I have a mixture? Does get his head run over by Hot Rod though. Let's have a look at the robot rope. A close second for sure. Great robot mode. Somewhat smaller though. body's kind of a little bit smaller but then you kind of get the height as I mentioned you get the height with those chromed wings great robot head do enjoy a visor you can do a little bit obviously with the extra bit of articulation for the transformation you get a little bit more cool 
cool. So, so cool. Why didn't I open them sooner? What a fool. But definitely going to have him in grasshopper mode. But still, stunning. The whole set is stunning. What an awesome first impression. Thanks for joining me on the floor for some rug time and getting all nostalgic, nostalgic. I've been Rudy Sassou. This has been the G1 Insecticons. And as lockdown 2.0 and the coronavirus continues, stay home, stay safe, stay strong. Thanks for watching.